In every generation, there is a chosen one. She alone must stand against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the Slayer. Happy Halloween, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Toy Shelf. I'm the ghost of Mitch Live, and I haunt action figures. And this is the fourth and final installment of our Haunted Halloween Special! <laughs> If you missed the first three spooky installments, all featuring classic Halloween villains by NECA Toys, you could check them out on our channel right now and keep those Halloween vibes coming. Before there was Bella and Edward, before there was Sookie and Bill, there was only one teen vampire drama that mattered, and that was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was originally a movie that came out in 1992. Who knew? I was four years old. But it later spawned a TV series that continued the storyline and they replaced the actor who played Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Sarah Michelle Gellar, who is of course the actor that we all know and associate with Buffy. Buffy moves to a small town in California called Sunnyvale. Well, no, Ricky, that, that's not right. That's Sunnyvale is where the park is, bud. Sunnydale, that's, that's somewhere totally different. Sorry. He moves to a small town called Sunnydale, which just happens to be on a hellmouth. Or the hellmouth. It's a mouth that goes to hell. <laughs> just one of many mouths that go to hell. It's not important. This toy line is by a manufacturer called More Action Collectibles. That's more. Two O's. More O's than ever before. More! I'm not really super familiar with this toy manufacturer, as this is the only toy line I have by them, and the quality and likeness of the characters, uh, let's say it varies drastically between figures. For example, one of the better figures, I would say, is uh, Willow here. Willow is played by the lovely Allison Hannigan, and while most people I feel like were crushing on Buffy, not me, no, no, no. Willow was my girl, mm. I don't know whether it was Willow, or whether it was more Allison Hannigan, or whether it was more Michelle from American Pie. Oh, and this one time, at band camp, I stuck a flute in my pussy. Uh, uh, where, where, so where was I, sorry, Willow. Willow is of course Buffy's best friend, and eventually she becomes a witch, getting supernatural powers all her own. Another main character, an integral part of the Scooby Gang, as they call themselves, is Xander here. Xander spends a good portion of the series in the friend zone, and he's pretty much the comic relief. He never really retains any superpowers, although throughout the show he does temporarily gain some from episode to episode. And another very integral character to the series is Giles, or Mr. Giles. I mean, they're all on close enough terms to forego the Mr. formality, but they're not close enough to just call him Rupert. He's the school's librarian, who also just happens to be the Watcher. Or... He's a watcher who just happens to be the school librarian. And the school library just happens to have a section on evil spells and creatures where they're able to research and learn how to defeat each monster of the week. He looks pretty good, but I must say a little underdressed because uh, the character Giles, I mean, he's, he's really British. He's normally wearing a, a jacket, a full piece suit. Next, we're gonna have a look at what I have to say is probably the worst figure in this entire series. This is Cordelia. And she is a huge continuing character throughout the series. She does have many redeemable moments and eventually you learn to love her as much as the rest of the gang. But she never really stops being a bitch. And I mean, I, I, I really, I, I can't make her head point up any more than this. It's, it's really not that good. I've seen alternate versions of a lot of these figures, so there's probably a better looking Cordy out there. And I have come across a bunch of these figures earlier on in my collecting, but nobody ever had a Buffy, and I wasn't about to start this collection without Buffy. 
<laughs> and I finally got Buffy as part of a four pack at some toy show somewhere. It was a good deal. So that's what started the collection. And they also make alternates of some of these figures from the series Angel, which brings me to my next figure, Angel. Now, I have some mixed feelings about this character. Like, hatred mixed with disgust. Angel is a 250 year old vampire who creepishly stalks and then eventually <clears throat> deflowers a 16 year old high school student. At first he's good, but then he's evil. And then he's not, but then he's dead. But then he isn't, but then he might be evil. But then he isn't. You get the idea. He's evil again. I I'm not evil again. Why does everyone think that? In the beginning, the whole Buffy and Angel, will they, won't they, love drama bullshit is like the most beaten to death plot point in the show. More so than the vampires that she literally beats to death. But the forbidden love between a witch and her werewolf of a boyfriend, now that's my kind of love drama. Which brings me to the next figure, Oz. Oz! I am the great and powerful Oz! Oz is a werewolf and Willow's love interest for the first few seasons. And he's kind of like the cool guy in the group in my opinion. Always super chill, never phased, plays guitar in a band, and he is played by actor Seth Green. Which means we get to do another round of who did it best. Was it? Seth Green by more action figures in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or was it Seth Green by McFarlane Toys as Scotty Evil from the Austin Powers franchise? Round one, fight. Um, no contest. It's McFarlane action figures. That's a round one knockout. I mean, this figure here, he only has just enough features so that you could figure out that it's Oz. And while this may not be McFarlane's best toy, uh, I think they nailed some of the finer details a little better. So I'm gonna have to give it to McFarlane Toys. And I'll also say, I watched 86 episodes of Buffy in the last couple of months, and Seth Green only had black hair one time. And side note, he also might be my favorite actor from the show. I mean, a few of these actors went on to have pretty good careers. Sarah Michelle Gellar went on to star in movies such as I Know What You Did Last Summer and Cruel Intentions. Alison Hannigan, of course, was a staple in the American Pie franchise. As well, she played Lily on How I Met Your Mother for eight years, and she hosts the Penn & Teller Fool Us show. And then there's Seth Green. Seth Green went on to do movies such as Idle Hands and the Austin Powers franchise, and he is a main cast member of Family Guy, and he is partly responsible for one of my favorite adult cartoons, Robot Chicken. If you're a fanboy like me with a twisted sense of humor, then you're probably very familiar with Robot Chicken. It's fan fiction, written by fans, for fans, and Seth Green does a really good job of getting a bunch of his friends and cast members from his other projects, as well as original voice actors to come together to make parodies and skits of original cartoons. In fact, he even has Sarah Michelle Gellar as a frequent actor and Huh, what's that? What? Yeah, Buffy. I was just I was just getting back to Buffy. <clears throat> Sorry, where was I? That's right. Vampires. Next we got this pretty looking fella. Pretty sure they just call him the Master. As well as their Monster of the Week mystery, they also typically have a bad guy of the season story arc. And the Master here is the first baddie from season one. He's a really one-dimensional character. There isn't much to him besides the fact that he's an evil vampire. And then next we have, hands down, my favorite vampire from the series, Spike. Spike comes on the scene around season two, and he and his love interest, Drusilla, are like the main baddies for that season. And then after that, he just sort of comes and goes. And besides falling apart like a f***ing baby every time his girlfriend breaks up with him, he's otherwise a pretty badass vampire. Uh, you can see the accessory he's holding here is a cross, and he's got a little handkerchief between his hand and the cross to stop the cross from burning his hand. I'm pretty sure that this is a nod to a very specific episode in season three where they're looking for this magical ring thing and he's with this other vampire and it doesn't matter. This is Spike. Also on the topic of crosses and accessories, as I was re-watching, I noticed a character holding a very similar cross to this one in the show. And I looked at it and I thought, hey, yeah, that, looks, that looks just like the one I have. And then, in the show, they pulled the top of that cross out to reveal that it was actually a knife. And I looked at my accessory and I thought, mm, nah. But, to my surprise, boom, exact replica. I do actually have to give these guys, like, full marks for the accessories. The accessories are 
pretty accurate and pretty badass. Pretty much with every figure, you get another one of these tombstones, which also acts as a stand for the figure, which creates the uh, Sunnydale graveyard where they spend so much of their time. And they all come with various weapons. So you end up with this huge Giles approved weapon stash, which is, you know, appropriate for the show because there's always just an absurd number of weapons laying around all the time. While these figures are pretty poseable, they're not very sturdy. Even with their stands, they don't stand. Their knees buckle, and their center of gravity is just too... off-center. And as I also mentioned, there are many, 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 many alternate versions. They've got 10 angels, and 6 willows, and 13 f***ing spikes, and 175 goddamn buffies! Damn you alternate versions! There are still a few classic Buffy characters that I'm sort of keeping an eye out for, like Tara, Willow's witch girlfriend, or Faith, the vampire slayer, or Anya, the revenge demon turned human. And while this is the only toy line I have by this particular manufacturer, apparently they do eventually partner up with Diamond Select Toys, who took over the manufacturing and made the Deluxe series, which I have none of. I guess what I'm trying to get at is this collection is never going to be complete, but it's still a pretty cool toy line. And if you're looking to complete your Buffy figure collection, we will try to scrape together some links to put in the description below. Of course, uh, being as how these figures are not manufactured anymore, they're sort of hard to come by, but we'll do our best. Check the description, we'll post what links we can. And if you use those links, you will of course directly be supporting our channel, which we very much appreciate. And this is pretty much my more action collectibles Buffy figure set, and this brings us to the end of another episode of The Toy Shelf, and the conclusion of our Haunted, Haunted Halloween, Halloween Special! We'd love to hear about some of your favorite Buffy the Vampire Slayer memories, monsters, and moments in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, check out our first three Halloween episodes, all featuring classic horror villains by NECA Toys, and they're just chock full of Halloween fun. Thanks for hanging out with us on the toy shelf. We hope that everybody out there watching still manages to have a wonderful Halloween, even if trick-or-treating is illegal wherever you live this year. The spooky vibes are still very much alive here on the toy shelf because we believe you're never too old to dress up, watch scary movies, and eat copious amounts of junk food. And of course, you're never too old to play with toys, even if you are just a ghost. It just happens to have a section on evil spells and evil creatures. Evil creatures. <laughs> evil creatures. In the beginning, the whole Buffy angel will they won't will they won't they. There are still some other classic Buffy. There are still some other. And of course, you're never too old to play to play.